Welcome to 3ABN Today. I'd like to welcome you to a special family worship. My name is Christian Berdahl and with me is my family, my wife Kobe in the middle, Tyler in the black shirt, and Micah, my youngest, here in the gray shirt. Before we begin, we'd like to ask God to be with us, so will you join us for prayer? Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time that we can come together as a family and the extended family of God with those who are watching. Lord, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us and draw us closer to Jesus. I pray that you would teach us something that we never knew before. And I pray that you would encourage our hearts to be more like our dear Savior. For we pray this in his name. Amen. Amen. I have a very special, special story I want to read for you. It's entitled, Heaven's Lamb. His name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. The Savior's coming was foretold in Eden after our first parents had chosen to sin against God. When Adam and Eve heard the first promise, they looked for its speedy fulfillment. They joyfully welcomed their firstborn son, hoping that he might be the deliverer. But the fulfillment of the promise tarried. From the days of Enoch, the promise was repeated through patriarchs and prophets, keeping alive the hope of his appearing, and yet he came not. Century after century passed away. The voices of the prophets ceased. The hand of the oppressor was heavy upon Israel. From the days of eternity, the Lord Jesus Christ was one with the Father. He was the image of God, the image of His greatness and majesty, the outshining of His glory, and it was to manifest this glory that He came to our world. To this sin-darkened earth, He came to reveal the light of God's love, to be God with us. Therefore it was prophesied of Him, His name shall be called Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive That mourns in lonely exile here Until the Son of God appear O oh, come thou wisdom from on high and order all things far and nigh. To us the path of knowledge show, and cause us in her ways to go. to the O Israel O come desire of nations come bind all peoples in one heart and mind strife and quarrels to cease. Fill the whole world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, 
dwell with us. Jesus was to reveal both to men and angels God. Our little world is the lesson book of the universe. In heaven itself God's law was broken. Sin originated in self-seeking. Lucifer, the covering cherub, desired to be first in heaven. He sought to gain control of heavenly beings, to draw them away from their Creator, and to win their homage to Himself. Therefore, He misrepresented God, attributing to Himself the desire for exaltation. Because God is a God of justice and awful majesty, Satan caused men and angels to look upon Him as severe and unforgiving. Thus He drew men to join in Him in the rebellion against God, and the night of woe settled down upon this world. Satan's deceptive power had to be broken. Now this could not be done by force. The exercise of force is contrary to the principles of God's government. He desires only the service of love, and love cannot be commanded. It cannot be won by force or authority, only by what? By love is what? Love, love awakened. awakened. Amen. God's character must be manifest in contrast to the character of Satan. This work only one being in all the universe could do. Upon the world's dark night, the Son of Righteousness must rise with healing in His wings. Angels attend Joseph and Mary as they journey from their home in Nazareth to the city of David. The mother of Jesus is brought to Bethlehem. She is the, of the lineage of David, and the son of David must be born in David's city. But in the city of their royal line, Joseph and Mary are unrecognized and unhonored. Weary and homeless, they traverse the entire length of the narrow street from the gate of the city to the eastern extremity of the town, vainly seeking a resting place for the night. In a rude building where beasts are sheltered, they at last find refuge, and here the Redeemer of the world is born. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child. See? 
Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, so When you think about that, Jesus being born, the King of the universe, being born in a manger, I mean, what does that do to your thinking? I mean, I, I wouldn't think that Jesus should live, uh, be born in a manger. I mean, he should be born in a palace. He's the King of the universe. Yeah. That's amazing. When you think about then the angels singing hallelujah and looking yeah. to, to watch that, they're commander-in-chief that was in heaven with them now. My dad, I can't quite imagine what, what they were going through at that moment. To yeah, see. to see that their commander-in-chief, their creator, was now, if you will, a creation. He was a baby now, and he was crying and, and maybe even eh, 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 oh, wooing, cooing around and helpless. The, the creator of the universe now helpless. Mm. That's... That's pretty heavy for me to think about. <laughs> and to think the beasts bowed before him, they even knew that he was... Right there in the manger. Yeah. Yeah. They knew divinity was there. That's awesome. From the beginning, God and Christ knew of the apostasy of Satan and the fall of man through the deceptive power of the apostate, Satan. God did not ordain that sin should exist, but He foresaw its existence and made provision to meet the terrible emergency. So great was His love for the world that He covenanted to give His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? Amen. Lucifer had said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. But Christ, being in the form of God, emptied Himself, taking on the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of men. Now this was a voluntary sacrifice. Jesus might have remained at the Father's side, but He chose to give back the scepter into the Father's hands and to step down from the throne of the universe, that he might bring light to the benighted, those, that means those who are in darkness, and life to the perishing. Christ was about to visit our world and to become incarnate. Had he appeared with the glory that was with the Father before the world was, we could not have endured the light of his presence, that we might behold it and not be destroyed. The manifestation of his glory was shrouded. His divinity was veiled with humanity, the invisible glory in the visible human form. His glory was veiled. His greatness and majesty were hidden, that he might draw near to sorrowful, tempted men. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping whom angels greet 
with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping why lies he in such mean estate where ox and ass are feeding good christian fear for sinners here the silent word is pleading this this is christ the king whom shepherds guard and angels sing haste haste to bring him lord the babe the son of mary so bring him in since golden myrrh come peasant king to own him the king of king salvation brings let loving hearts Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. The babe, the son of Mary. The angels had wondered at the glorious plan of redemption. I bet they did. The plan of redemption involves my commander becoming a baby? I would wonder at that too, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they watched to see how the people of God would receive His Son. To the land where the glory of God had been revealed and the light of prophecy had shone, the angels came. The tidings of His birth and the wonderful significance of His mission had been spread abroad. Yet Jerusalem was not preparing to welcome her Redeemer. Think about that. Here Jesus is laying in a manger. He's just born the Redeemer of the world and Jerusalem, God's chosen people, aren't even preparing to meet Him. And it was foretold. They knew the signs and the things to watch for. Yeah. Just as much as we know the things to watch for. And sometimes we get wrapped up in our daily lives or wrapped up in doing chores or, you know, doing schoolwork or ministry work, whatever it may be. And sometimes we can miss the signs. And the signs are all around us today. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming soon. And just like in the days when Jesus was born, the signs were all there. But God's people were missing it. I hope that none of us, and I hope, dear friends, none of you, missed the sign either. Yeah. Jesus is coming soon. Mm -hmm. And the shepherds were the ones that saw him. Right, right. The angel came to the shepherds and not to the king. He came to people that were guarding sheep. Yeah, exactly. They had their eyes open, didn't they? Yeah, they were the ones that were looking. Amen. With amazement, the heavenly messengers beheld the indifference of that people whom God had called to communicate to the world the light of sacred truth. In the temple, the morning and evening sacrifice daily pointed to the Lamb of God, yet even here was no preparation to receive Him. The priests and teachers of the nation knew not that the greatest event of the ages was about to take place. Men knew it not, but the tidings fill the heavens with rejoicing. With a deeper and more tender interest, the holy beings from the world of light are drawn to the earth. 
the whole world is brighter for Jesus' presence. Above the hills of Bethlehem are gathered an innumerable throng of angels. They wait the signal to declare the glad news to the world. Had the leaders in Israel been true to their trust, they might have shared the joy in heralding the birth of Jesus. But now, they're passed by. In the fields where the boy David had led his flock, Tyler, this is what you were talking about, shepherds were still keeping watch by night. Through the silent hours, they talked together of the promised Savior and prayed for the coming of the King to David's throne. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for I behold, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. At these words, visions of glory filled the mind of the listening shepherds. The Deliverer has come to Israel. Power, exaltation, and triumph are associated with His coming. But the angel must prepare them to recognize their Savior in poverty and humiliation. This shall be a sign unto you, he says. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. The shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. O oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall was born, O oh, night divine, O oh, night, O oh, night Faith serenely beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand. So led by light, a star sweetly gleaming, here come the wise men. is no 
Was a holy night, an amazingly holy night. Sin had become a science. Rebellion had struck its roots deep into the heart. It's kind of a, it's a yucky statement. <laughs> Sin had become science. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. What does that mean? Sin had become science. Oh. It had become something they got really good at, and they were good at doing it over and over and over again. Mm. Scary. Yeah. I don't want sin to be a science for me. Amen. <laughs> me either. <laughs> Neither. It was demonstrated before the universe that apart from God, humanity could not be lifted up. A new element of life and power must be imparted by Him who made the world. With intense interest, the unfallen worlds had watched to see Jehovah rise and sweep away the inhabitants of the earth. And if God should do this, Satan was ready to carry out his great plan for securing to himself the allegiance of heavenly beings. Had the world been destroyed, he would have claimed that his accusations were proved true. But instead of destroying the world, God sent his son to save it kind of thwarted the devil's plans there, don't you think? Yeah. At the very crisis when Satan seemed about to triumph, the Son of God came with the ambassage of divine grace, like an ambassador to this world. Through every age, through every hour, the love of God has been exercised toward the fallen race. Satan was exulting that he had succeeded in debasing the image of God in humanity. Then Jesus came to restore in man the image of his Maker. None but Christ can fashion anew the character that has been ruined by sin. He came to lift us up from the dust to reshape the marred character after the pattern of his divine character and to make it beautiful with his own glory. Joy to the world, the Lord let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. The Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. sin and sorrow roll, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make His blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as He rules the 
world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders and wonders of song awesome? I love Joy to the World. I don't know how you can listen to that without wanting to smile. Amen. Joy to the World. Mm -hmm. Why? The Lord has come. Amen. Yep. Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Lord has come. What a blessing. You know, we, we shouldn't walk around as mopey Christian people, should we? Joy to the World. God has come. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east. They have reached the land of Israel. With eager steps they press onward, confidently expecting the Messiah's birth to be the joyful burden on every tongue. They said, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. To their amazement, they find none who seem to have a knowledge of the newborn king. What? In the city of David, where Jesus was prophesied to be born, none seem to have the knowledge of the newborn king. Their questions call forth no expressions of joy, but rather of surprise and fear, not unmingled with contempt. The arrival of the Magi was quickly noised throughout Jerusalem. Their strange errand created an excitement among the people which penetrated to the palace of King Herod. He was aroused at the intimation of a possible rival. Herod invited the Magi to a private interview. He inquired at what time had the star appeared and professed to hail with joy the intimation of the birth of Christ. He bade his visitors uh, search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. The report of the angel's visit to the shepherds had been brought uh, to Jerusalem, and now the Magi's errand was added, but the rabbis had treated them as unworthy of their notice. Pride and envy closed the door against the light. Ever notice that? Sometimes you have an idea in your mind and, or you think maybe something of someone and, or somebody else and it, maybe you shouldn't be thinking down a prideful line and you're thinking, well, maybe I'm better than them or, wow, I can ride my bike faster or whatever it means. And, and sometimes when you're that way, and I know in my life I've seen that, where I'm full of pride, Sometimes I cannot even see the truth or the light in front of me that Jesus is trying to present to me. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah, if we're pride-filled, Jesus can't lead us to the heavenly gates. Amen, that's right. Mm -hmm. Pride and envy closed the door against the light. Well, that's, they, I think, too, something that many of us do now. Our pride and envy closes our door to the light, and we, because of things we've heard or things we've thought of Jesus or of God that we won't even look further. We won't even come and see, just like the Magi. They wouldn't even come and see if the things were true. They just shut it off. And uh, I know I was that way at one point right. in my life, and I'm just glad that, that God got through my heart so that I could overcome <clears throat> that and come and at least see. And uh, when I came and saw, well, then there's no denying. Amen. You taste and see that He's good. Amen. Mm -hmm. They would not even, oh, here you go. They would not even go to Bethlehem to see whether these things were so. And they led the people to regard the interest in Jesus, listen to this, Micah, as a fanatical excitement. Here they began the rejection of Christ. Here began the rejection of Christ by the priests and rabbis. 
From this point, their pride and stubbornness grew into a settled hatred of the Savior. It's just a baby. Yeah, and over time, they, yeah, they already hated a baby. I mean, I don't know many people that have ever hated a baby. Uh-huh. It started way back then. <laughs> From this point, their pride and stubbornness grew into a settled hatred of the Savior. The wise men departed from Jerusalem, and to their great joy they saw the star. At Bethlehem they found no royal guard stationed to protect the newborn king. None of the world's honored men were in attendance. Jesus was cradled in a manger, his parents his only guardians. They saw the young child, and they fell down and worshipped him. Beneath the lowly guise of Jesus, they recognized the presence of divinity, the presence of God. They gave their hearts to Him as their Savior, and they poured out their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. God had provided. And in a dream, Joseph received warning to flee into Egypt with Mary and the child. And the angel said, Be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. How could it be this baby in my arms sleeping now so peacefully the Son of God the angel said could it be Lord I know he's not my own not of my flesh not of my bone still father let this baby be Son of my love, Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How can a man be father to the Son of God? Lord, for all my life I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? He looks so small, his face and hands so fair. And when he cries, the sun just seems to disappear. But when he laughs, it shines again. How could it be? Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How can a man be father to the Son of God? How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? How could it be this baby in my arms? Sleeping now so peacefully, the Son of God, the Say, how could it be? How could it be? How could it be? think about that. 
here is the, the Son of God, baby Jesus. And Mary and Joseph come to the city at the unction of Rome, and they're there to register, and they can't find a place to sleep, and, and the only place they can find is, a, is that manger for animals. And the Creator God, Jesus Christ Himself, is born in that manger. And then out of nowhere, the wise men come and shepherds come and wise men give them money and gifts. And, and Mary and Joseph had to be sitting there saying, this is amazing what's going on. This is the Son of God. Oh, that's right. And then the Magi, the three wise men take off. They leave and go back home. And, and God tells Joseph in a dream, you need to get out of here because Herod's going to try to kill this child, my son, your son. Think about that. A man saying, how am I supposed to raise Jesus? Tyler, Micah, I am trying to raise you for Jesus. I can't imagine trying to raise Jesus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jesus for God. Uh, for God, <laughs> yes. That's incredible. What a responsibility. I mean, Joseph and Mary must have sat there at night and just prayed and prayed and said, Oh, Father God in heaven, help us to do right by you for this child. And you know what? Every parent on this planet needs to be praying the same prayer for their children. Mommy and I pray that for you every night, Lord. Because I want God, when He says to us, Where are the children I gave you? I'll say, They're right here. Amen. 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 You were going to say something, Kobe? Oh, it's okay. I was just going to say, we need to pray more <laughs> as parents. Amen. I think that we can help raise our children. And if, if they could do that, and if God entrusted Jesus to humans, then He's entrusted these children to us, and, and we can do it. Because we, we can, can tap into that same power that Joseph and Mary could. Amen. Jesus was being hunted. From Ever the time since of he was his birth, bo huh? born to the time he did die. Yeah, that's true. I mean, all through his life, all through his ministry, how did he live so perfectly without being afraid? He connected completely to his God. I want to be like him. Amen, me too. Amen. The childhood and youth of Jesus were spent in a little mountain village. The palaces of kings would have been privileged in receiving him as a guest, but he passed by the homes of wealth, the courts of royalty, to make his home in obscure and despised Nazareth. While he was a child, he thought and spoke as a child, but no trace of sin marred the image of God within him. Yet he was not exempt from the temptations. The inhabitants of Nazareth were proverbial for their wickedness. Jesus was placed where His character would be tested. Jesus lived in a peasant's home and faithfully and cheerfully acted His part in bearing the burdens of the household. Throughout His life on earth, Jesus was an earnest and constant worker. He expected much, Micah. Therefore, He attempted much. The positiveness and energy, the solidity and the strength of character manifested in Christ are to be developed to be developed in us. Jesus was misunderstood by His brothers because He was not like them. You see, His standard was not their standard. The example of Jesus was to them a continual irritation. He hated but one thing in the world, and that was sin. He could not witness a wrong act without pain, which it was impossible to disguise. His unselfishness and integrity were commented on with sneer. His forbearance and kindness were termed cowardice. Of the bitterness that falls to the lot of humanity, there was no part which Christ did not taste. There were those who tried to cast contempt upon Him because of His birth. And even in His childhood, He had to meet their scornful looks and evil whisperings. If he had responded by an impatient word or look, if he had conceded to his brothers by even one wrong act, Tyler, he would have failed of bring, being a perfect example. Thus, he would have failed of carrying out the plan for our redemption. This is why the tempter worked 
to make his life as trying as possible that he might be led into sin. Time had passed, and Jesus had now given three years of public ministry to the world. His example of self-denial and disinterested benevolence, his life of purity, of suffering and devotion was known to all, yet this short period of three years was all the world could endure of the presence of its Redeemer. The Sanhedrin and the Pharisees, the wise men, had rejected Christ's message and were now bent upon His death. They had ever opposed Christ's work, and it was their fixed determination to silence Him who did such marvelous works that all men wondered. They resolved to put Christ to death at the first favorable opportunity. Jesus' life had been one of persecution and insult. He who was ever touched by human woe, who healed the sick, restored sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, speech to the dumb, who broke the slumbers of the dead, who held thousands entranced by His words of wisdom, was unable to reach the heart of those who were blinded by prejudice and hatred, who stubbornly rejected the light. The priests and rulers had now finally accomplished their design. And the news of Jesus' condemnation had spread throughout Jerusalem, and people of all classes and ranks flocked toward the place of execution. The Savior made no murmur of complaint. His face remained calm and serene, but great drops of sweat stood upon His brow. While the soldiers were doing their fearful work, Jesus prayed for His enemies, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. His mind passed from His own suffering to the sin of His persecutors and the terrible retribution that would be theirs. No curses were called down upon the soldiers who were handling Him so roughly. No vengeance was invoked upon the priests and rulers who were gloating over their accomplishments. Christ pitied them in their ignorance and guilt. He breathed only a plea for their forgiveness, for they know not what they do. This prayer of Christ for His enemies, it embraced the whole world, including us. It took in every sinner that had lived or should live, from the beginning of the world all the way to the end of time. Upon all rests the guilt of crucifying the Son of God. To all, forgiveness is freely offered. Whosoever will may have peace with God and inherit eternal life. That's us. Amen. We can inherit that eternal life. Amen. That's a gift from God. Now the Lord of glory was dying. He was counted a transgressor that He might redeem us from the condemnation of the law. The guilt of every descendant of Adam was pressing upon his heart. It was the sense of sin bringing the Father's wrath upon him as man's substitute that made the cup he drank so bitter and broke the heart of the Son of God. With amazement, angels witnessed the Savior's despairing agony. The hosts of heaven veiled their face from this fearful sight. Then Jesus not able to see through the portholes of the tomb, cried out with a loud voice, saying, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In clear, trumpet-like tones that seemed to resound throughout creation, Jesus cried, It is finished! Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he bowed his head upon his breast, and he died. When Jesus laid in the grave, Satan triumphed. He dared to hope that the Savior would not take up his life again. But when Christ saw, when he saw Christ come forth in triumph, he knew that his kingdom would have an end and that he must finally die. Amen. Amen. To the believer, Christ is the resurrection and the life. In our Savior, the life that was lost through sin is restored. I am come, He said, that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All are weighted down with, with burdens that only Christ can remove. The heaviest burden that we bear is the burden of sin, Micah. And if we were left to bear this burden, 
it would crush us out. But the sinless one who has taken our place, the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Jesus knows by experience what are the weaknesses of humanity. He knows what are our wants and wherein lies the strengths of our temptations. He is watching over you, trembling child of God. Are you tempted? He will deliver. Are you weak? He will strengthen. Are you ignorant? He will enlighten you. Are you wounded? He will heal. Come unto me is his invitation. Whatever your anxieties and trials, spread out your case before your Lord. Your spirit will be braced for endurance. The weaker and more helpless you know yourself to be, the stronger you will become in his strength. Soon and very soon, the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him to redeem his own, mm -hmm. our family, our friends, those who believe in Jesus. Love has conquered all. The lost is found. Heaven rings with voices in lofty strains proclaiming blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Behold, heaven's Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. What a gift! What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet, what can I give him? What can I give him? What can I give him? I can give him my heart. Amen. What can I give Him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part, yet what can I give Him, what can I give Him, what can I give Him, I can give Him my heart. What can I give Him? What can I give Him? What can I give Him? I can give Him my heart. I can give Him my heart. What can we give Jesus? Our heart. Our heart, that's right. Is it too much for Jesus to ask for our hearts, my, Tyler and Micah? No. No. Jesus wants to take us and shape us and make us something beautiful. He wants to help us to be like Him, that sinless boy who, who never chose to do wrong. He wants us to be like that sinless adult, Kobe that chose to never do wrong. And when we tap into God, when we tap into God, Tyler, we can do it. Micah, we can do it. Amen. And as a, as a family, we can come together. And I wanna pray together right now and pray with our friends. I wanna pray that Jesus will help us to be more like Him and, and to never forsake the great gift that God has given us. Will you join us in prayer as well? Let's pray. 
Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you would draw close to us and help us to be like Jesus. What a gift, and what can I give him? I can give him my heart, and I give Jesus my heart right now to take and shape and mold as he would see fit. For we pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Amen. God bless you, friends. Until next time, may God richly bless you abundantly more than you could ever think or ask. If you would like to receive Christian's complete CD, The Appearing, Heaven's Lamb, which includes four additional songs complete with narration, then you can write to Shepherd's Call, Post Office Box 339, Edgewood, New Mexico, 87015. That's Shepherd's Call, Post Office Box 339, Edgewood, New Mexico, 87015. You can call 505-286-5522, that's 505-286-5522. Or you can visit his website and order online at shepherdscall.com. That's shepherdscall, all one word, shepherdscall.com.